five technical project today, which is creating a resume and sharing documents. So go ahead and click on the project. Once it loads, I want you to download the files. You may or may not need all of the files today. the uh, Word document uh, instructions and the start file. You may or may not need the resume template because uh, we're going to pull it from the um, templates already there. So I'm going to go ahead and I've already downloaded these. Well, I'll just click on download anyway. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and click on the instructions. here to the introduction and what we're going to do today is we're going to use a template to create a document, change the document margins, personalize a document template, customize the theme fonts and theme colors, modify a style and create one, create, modify and insert a building block, uh, export a word to a PDF file and edit the PDF file in Word, uh, check the document cap capability uh, and then later on, if there's time on this particular video, we'll do the share a document on OneDrive, uh, get a sharing link, send Word document using email, save Word document as a web page, format it as a hyperlink, change the style set, and highlight the text. But these last sections uh, may not be on this vid particular video. Okay, some people prefer to use their own creative skills to design and compose Word documents. Using Word, for example, can help you develop the content and decide the location for each item in a document. On occasion, however, you may have difficulty making or composing a particular type of document. To assist with the task of creating certain type of documents, such as resumes and letters and posters and all kinds of things, Word provides templates. A template is a file with a theme applied that may contain formatted placeholders in text, uh, in content controls, headers and footers and graphics that you can replace with your own. After Word creates a document from a template, you fill in the blanks or replace a placeholder text or content controls in a document. And the neat thing is, is that uh, it already does everything, uh, the formatting and layout, everything pretty much on its own, so it's pretty easy to to use. The only catch is, is that you have to modify it for your own use. For instance, this is what Dwayne Jackman, this is what we're going to be making today. We'll be making a resume for Dwayne. Uh, in this particular one, there's a couple of different uh, heading areas that are not the same, so we're going to have to modify them, cutting and pasting. All right, everybody ready to get started? Let's go. So, the very first thing we need to do is we need to start Word and specify settings. So I'm going to go into the download section that we were in a while ago, and I'm going to open my new document. So our new document is now open, and I'm going to go back into our directions, resize it so that we can see it all. Alright, so it says start Word, create a blank document in the Word window. If necessary, minimize the Word, maximize the Word window. I have it where I can see the whole, the whole frame. Print layout is already clicked on here. The show hide button I've already clicked on. To display the page, the same width as the document window if necessary. Done that. Verify that the ruler is on. My ruler is on, but if it's not on, I would click on view. And then I'd go over here to show and then I would make sure ruler is check marked. So now I have ruler um, this don't work. And I'm not going to do number six because it's talking about if you're using a mouse and want your screen to match the figures in the book um, and all that. But mine is already set that way and most people's are unless you're using a touch. Using a template to create a resume. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to do. So to create a new document from an online template we're already in the SAM, we've clicked the file on the ribbon, and new backstage view to do the new, and resume. So that's what we're going to do, file, new, and we're going 
to go right here. Mine is right here because I've already used it. But let's go down here. And we're going to type in resume. And search. And hit enter. And it's going to look for resumes. Now, there are all kinds of cool looking resumes. And I suggest that you look through them um, when you do create your own personal resume. But for this practice one uh, in the textbook project, we're going to use a very simple one. So you're going to scroll all the way down until you find the one that just says resume. And I'm looking at what the picture looked like a while ago. That's why I'm scrolling really fast, uh, looking for something that looks like the resume. Here we go, right here. See, it says resume. Click on that picture. Okay. I've clicked on the resume thumbnail. Now it's given me a preview screen of what it looks like. And it tells me to go ahead and click the create button in step three. And it says if the resume template displays your name instead of the text, uh, you click the undo. So mine just has your name right here. It doesn't have my personal name. It just says your name. Okay. If requested by your instructor, print the resume template. We don't really need to print it because we can see it here. We'll look over that. If your screen opens the resume assistant plane, pane, close the pane. This is the resume assistant pane. Close it. And then save the resume to your hard drive, OneDrive, or other storage location using the name SCWD5 Jackman Resume. So let's do that now. File. Save as. I'll put it on this PC in my documents folder. And I'm going to call it SC underscore WD underscore 5. Okay, I'm going to go back up here and look at this real quick because I want you to notice that this is actually a table. You have several different tables in, in this product. Uh, you have content placeholders that we're going to change. Um, and these are also got content controls. But because it's a table, we have to be really careful with it because we don't want to end up messing something up because tables you slide the, the width of a cell over or something like that, it will mess it all up. So be very careful when you're clicking and dragging and things like that within the document. Okay. Highly recommend that you read how to craft a successful resume. If you want to pause and read over that, I would highly recommend you do it because you're going to end up having to create your own personal resume at some point in time. Okay. So these are the things that we're going to do uh, when you create a resume from a template. You're going to change the name, fill in the content information, fill in the objective section. We're going to move the education experience sections above the skills and abilities section. We're going to fill in the experience section. We're going to add a row to the ex education section, delete the skills and abilities section, and then we're going to change the heading communication to certifications and fill in that section. Then we're going to change the heading leadership to community service and fill in this section. So we've got a lot of little things to do, but it should not take super long to do it. And it looks complicated, but it's really easy. So click the design on the ribbon. So we're going to change the theme colors. So click the design on the ribbon. And we're going to click on the colors button. We're not going to change the theme. We're just going to change the theme colors. So that would be this button right here. And it tells us to find orange red in the gallery. So here's the orange red theme palette. So we'll click on that. Nothing changes from what we can see right now, but it will eventually. Set custom margins. The resume template selected in this project uses 0.75 inch top and bottom margins and 1.1 inch left and right margins. Uh, we prefer a one inch margin for the top, left, and right edges. So the resume uh, of the resume in a smaller bottom margin. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So display the layout. And then we're going to go to margins, and we're going to go down here to custom margins. Not this button, but this one here. And we've got what we need. So type in one at the top uh, of, for the top margin. Let's see here, 0.5 on the bottom. And then left and right are both one. One and one for left and right. So I'm just going to click the down button. And, those. and they're set. One, one, point five, and one. Ours looks the same. Click OK. OK. And our margins have changed. Turn the page. Now we want to 
to review grid lines. Now my grid lines are already turned on, so I'm going to pretend that they weren't. So give me one second to get in here. I'm going to click on the tables themselves so we can get our table tools up here. And then we're going to go to table layout. And then right here is the view grid lines. And this is what it looks like when you opened it. Click on view grid lines, and this is what it looked like when I was opening it earlier. So I have the view grid lines open. So now you can see the actual table. So here's a table, here's a separate table, here's a separate table. These have more than one cell in the rows. So that's why I was telling you at the very beginning to be a little careful clicking and dragging because you don't end up messing up any of that. Okay, so we've clicked on it. We've uh, Clicked on view. Now it says position the insertion point in any table cell. Oh, we did this part already. Uh, view grid lines. Turn the page. Now we want to change theme colors. The next step is to change the heading, body, text fonts, resume, and then why is to make it look nice. Display the design tab. And scroll to the Arial black Arial theme font in the gallery. So here's our theme fonts, and we're going to scroll down. Our line has been used already, so that's why it's at the top. You scroll way, way down, almost to the very, very, very bottom, you see. And then here's Arial Black Arial. Click on that, and that gives us different theme fonts based on our, like, our heading style and our title style and everything. The next button. Next, turn the page. To enter text and a content control. Okay, now, so all of these have little content control areas. So now we can click on them and we can change them to what they're supposed to be. So at this one is the name. So we're going to click on the name and we're going to type in Dwayne Jackman. So I'll just click on the name. And it highlights it all because it's a content control. And I can just start typing. And it's already all caps, so you don't have to worry about it. It's already formatted for you. And there it goes. Enter text and more content controls. So now we're going to do the address. So I'm going to click on this free address here. And we're going to type in 44, 13, Parker Road, comma, New Orleans. Capitalize correctly. It's super important. This is a representation of yourself in a, in a resume. If you're typing it for somebody else, we want it to be real professional looking too. Click on the telephone, 504 555 127, and then the email, we're going to put TJ97 at Syngage. Now, as a little pointer, if you have a real crazy email address, you might want to create a more professional email address to use for uh, professional stuff. So if you have like some crazy email uh, address from your teenage years, uh, I would suggest you create one that um, more represents a, a grown-up's email address. Okay, now to delete a content control. If I wanted to delete a content control, I would right-click the content control and then click remove content control. So I'm going to show you what that would look like if we wanted to do it, but we're not going to do it. We just right-click it and then you would be able to remove the content We don't want to do it. It just says if you wanted to do it. Right. Now to create a custom theme font. So we're going to go to the design tab. We're already on it. Click the fonts button. And then click customize fonts at the very bottom. And it's going to allow us to create a uh, new one. So we're going to go to the body font, and we're going to change the body of our uh, text to Times New Roman. So they're in alphabetical order. You go all the way down to the T's. Yes, you can type it into. I like to see all the different fonts that are in there. Okay, Times New Roman, click on it. If necessary, select any text in the name box and type in resume text. So right here where it says name, we're going to call this resume text. We're going to define our theme fonts. We're 
remember when we first started in the beginning chapter, you use uh, sans serif fonts for web-based uh, when you're reading on a screen, but you use Times Roman or a serif font when you have it in a print view, the print mode. It's a lot easier on the eyes with that serif font. Okay, and so we're planning on printing out this eventually, so we want it to look really nice, easy to read. Okay, click the save button, we did that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, turn the page. Create custom theme fonts, theme colors. Uh, uh, when we did change the font, it also changed the uh, the width of the characters and everything. So that's one of the reasons why this went from a two liner to a one liner. Okay, create custom theme colors. Click the colors button, and we're going to click on customize colors. And the text background dark one button. That's what we're going to change. So the text back, background dark one, top one. And then we have our theme colors palette. It says click tan text to darker 90. So there's my tan text two, and we'll go down to the darker section. Darker 90. And then we're going to change the uh, name down here in the bottom. And we're going to say resume text. Click the save OK button. And now we have our modified themes. If you want to modify and save your themes, you can do it this way. Enter text in a content control. The following steps are select the objective content control in the resume and then replace this placeholder. So we're going to look for the objective, which is right here. I'm going to click on this content control. It selects it all automatically. And I'll type in the objective. Spelled word, and I also misspelled, I think, will or allow, and it automatically corrected. So let's fix our spelling errors now. Okay. To obtain a sales representative position with a pharmaceutical sales firm that will allow me to grow professionally, period. All right, that's what I have written. 